In this video, I will be walking you through the steps involved with doing linear range determination. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a project that had already been started, and I'm going to click on Create New Experiment. So down here, uh, we have the linear range, and the reason that we need to validate the linear range is so that you can confirm that the amount of protein that you've loaded can actually be quantified efficiently by the software. And this includes both uh, whether it is a housekeeping protein, uh, the revert total membrane stain, in addition to the target that you'll be using. So when I click on linear range right here, uh, the, the images that I'm going to be using have, have a total protein stain used. And normally I would pull in images from the work area or zip files, but I, I'm going to go ahead and look at the image gallery and find the uh, images that I need for this. Now these are coming from two different scans because the uh, membrane was scanned first with the revert stain and then it was processed with the antibody. And so we have both of the images right here and I'm going to go ahead and click on start. So I need to name this validation so I'm going to call this revert and then CPARP because that's what was used on on this membrane and click next and so for here, uh, if, if the images had been swapped and uh, the, the revert was actually here on the right, you could, you could click on this and switch these back and forth with each other. So, but I'm going to call this revert. And then this is C parp, just like that. And if you have it already in the list, that you'll see a drop down right there with the names present. So I'm going to go ahead and um, adjust the image just a slightly uh, to make things a little more visible and easier to see. And then I'm going to draw the boundary of my lanes. Now I have nine lanes on here, so I need to make sure that everything lines up pretty well. It doesn't have to be exact because we can uh, adjust it later on, but if I needed to, I could adjust the boundary at this point or I could just start over. But I'm go going to click on Next. And from here, you need to set up your sample information. Now the first lane is a molecular weight marker. Um, lane three was not used, but in all of the other lanes, I need to enter in the amount of protein that was loaded uh, into each one of the lanes. So this is a dilution running from 40 micrograms down to 1.25 micrograms. So you click on next. Now the molecular weights uh, for the revert images are not that important, but we do have to assign molecular weights uh, for us to move forward. And so I'm just going to go ahead and add a few bands on here. I'll explain the molecular weight determination in, in more detail in, on the next image. Now from here, if I need to adjust the location of the lanes, I can do that so that I'm including all of the revert signal on here. Looks like the other ones are okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. And so now we have a graph that plots the signal from the revert uh, versus the amount of protein loaded. And then up here at the top, we have a graph or a, a color scale of what is the best range for uh, linearity. And so what we're looking for here are these areas of green. And once we analyze the next image, we'll be able to look at those combined. So now here I'm going to adjust the boundary for my uh, target protein. Now again, I only I have nine lanes on here, and so I just want to adjust this uh, so that it encompasses uh, the lanes. And it looks like everything is okay through there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Done. And then I click Next. Now again, it's going to pull the same information since these are uh, from the same blot. But if you needed to, you, uh, if they did have, for some reason, a uh, different loading amount, you could um, change those right there. So now for molecular weights, I'm going to choose the Chameleon 800 Duo, and I'm going to add the molecular weight bands by uh, clicking the Add Band just to the right there. And now you click Done. And then we'll go to the next window. Now for the fine bands, 
uh, you can either uh, add the bands individually or you can find all of the bands together. So I'm going to click on find bands and then I'm going to move this line to just over the sample bands. And so then it will do, do the determination of the size and location of the box. Now if need be, you can edit these if you need to make some adjustments. And then once you have all of those in the correct location, you go ahead and click on next. So here we have a histogram, or I'm sorry, a graph of the uh, loading amounts for my CPARP versus the signal. And then we have the optimal linear range right up here on the top. So now when I click on next, we see uh, the combined graph. And what we're looking for is where we have the, uh, the most green in both the revert and the target. And then you can adjust the line here so that you can determine what is the optimal loading range uh, for both your reverts and your targets uh, for this experimental setup. So it looks like we have between five and 10 uh, five, 5 and 15 micrograms is the, the linear range where loading 10 micrograms is probably your best option. So once we have determined that, I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And so then it, here in the report, we can look at the combined linear range for both the revert and the target. And then we also have uh, images uh, from the revert along with its single graph uh, along with the data tables, and then we have the image from the targets and its graph and the data tables. Now if you want to export this to another computer for someone else to look at, you can export this as an experimental file, or if you want to do a PDF report uh, so that you can print it off, you can uh, do that PDF report right there. Then also you can rate the experiments. So if, if everything looks exactly like the way that you want and it's a good experiment, you can go ahead and click on five, five stars, and then click done. Thank you.